Mary Maiden, welcome. Today we're going to be taking on the Sims Level 4 Strawberry Cake. So you've probably noticed we've been making the chocolate and white cake already. So those ones are definitely going to be our more experimental ones. Uh, I found out Duncan Hines has a Strawberry Supreme that doesn't have any uh, animal products in it. So very excited about that. Uh, again because I'm recording this before I post the other one so if there is something I don't know about Heinz I'm perfectly open to learning I always know sometimes it's a little bit like too good to be true when we're able to find something just off the shelf uh, but I'm very excited to do that we are gonna go ahead and do a cream cheese frosting I'm not gonna be doing any piping in this just because my mood is kind of low and even though I like the reusable bags I just want to make this super nice and easy and after this time I actually looked at the Sims video again and so and I noticed that they probably do a light a light piping but even given the thing we're not really gonna make it look exactly the same so we're just gonna go for two ice layers <laughs> um but yeah let's go ahead and get started marry me again so here we are now of course with mixing our one bowl ingredients for the strawberry cake and we have our oven preheating at 350 or pans if you need them to be or oiled or you have your cupcakes lined um yeah and so we have our strawberry mix in here beautiful pink it honestly reminds me of strawberry uh nisquick strawberry milk <laughs> Let me know if you have any idea what I'm talking about, but uh, it does not say anything about substituting milk unlike their chocolate version, so I'm kind of running low on my protein milk anyway, and I'm perfectly fine using water, so that's what we're going to do today. Um, let me know if you try it with milk. And then we have our half a cup of oil, using our spatula to make sure we get all of that goodness. I have found that oil is actually the thing that helps with the cake, just elevating the flavor, which makes a lot of sense. <laughs> Oven's ready. And then of course, as always, I'm using chia eggs because that's what I have. <laughs> probably, um, you probably could use aquafaba for a strawberry cake like this because it does work better with like having maybe like stiffer whites and then, or stiffer eggs. And then flax eggs for sure probably would also be suitable. But you know me, I need to get rid of my chia eggs. So we're going to go ahead and do this because I don't mind as much. Sometimes it can like for the structural. So we'll see when we get to icing it if it's going to be like super difficult like the devil's food was. Because that was not as much fun. But um, yeah, as you can see, I am the hand mixer. <laughs> we don't have anything else. So I'm going to start with some small circles in the center, small concentric, center, Blah. small concentric circles, which are essentially when you start in the center and go outwards to so start incorporating more and more. Um, be careful when you use this term, all I got to say. You can tell I'm really sensitive if sounds are getting to me today. <laughs> Ooh, yum. Yeah, it kind of tastes like the strawberry and quick milk. <laughs> um, I'm very excited. I haven't had strawberry cake in like such a long time, but honestly, like, I saw that this was a little four, and I was like, oh my gosh, perfect. I'm trying to find what else I can make. And seeing as how there's literally like two base game recipes that become available, you would think I would have like seen it sooner. But I really have written off cakes. And then here at this, I'm like, oh, it's so easy to just get done. And like figuring out what kind of frosting to use, because as you can tell, I've tried to do a little something a little bit different for each one. Sorry, I'm like heavy breathing. I mean, nothing new probably, but. I'm just trying to make sure I have all of the lumps out. It's a little bit harder with the chia egg, of course, but I haven't been seeing any dry spots in a minute. So now we can go ahead and pour it into our pans. We have our four inches. And then I also have some, um, 
a couple of six inch layers today too. So we're gonna be putting them into all four of these. And then I probably will eat the leftover if there is some. Let's see. <laughs> Oh, I'm trying so hard not to like make a mess, but also I feel like these will like fill up so fast, so I don't want to easily overfill them. It's just been a minute since the chocolate one. I really can't remember. I might have just used the scoop for all of it. So close. Okay, so you only want to fill it ever to like three quarters filled. I don't know if I've ever said that before. Sorry, such awkward arm shot. <laughs> What's new? Choop. I don't know why this is giving me like such childhood vibes. I've never... I don't have childhood memories of making strawberry cake. I don't know, maybe it's just strawberry like is inherently a like childhood vibe. It used to be my favorite milkshake and ice cream flavor when I was a teen, like late teen to my early 20s. You could say I'm quirky. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna call that good. Hopefully those are somewhat even. And then I clearly put more importance on those four inch ones because I don't know. We might just get two thinner cakes with this one. Or we might just get one cake. But I have both pans oiled so it'll be a little upsetting. <laughs> yeah. goodness okay so now we know it does about a couple well I'm wondering if those will pop up really bad oh well you live you learn I think that's gonna be the best we can get them <laughs> sorry you can't even see anything we're just making cake though you've seen this before just a little bit different a little bit pinker we're gonna go ahead and put these in the oven bake them up and then after we take them in the oven and we're cooling we're going to work on the frosting so we're doing a cream cheese frosting so at the time that you decide I could have said this earlier but even at this point if you do it still works out go ahead and pull out your butter and your cream cheese because and of course we're using vegan cream cheese because it needs to thick it thin oh my gosh soften it needs to soften up and especially with vegan cream cheese and vegan butter I feel like they're more prone to staying harder so the other thing you can do is set them on top of your oven and allow it to like kind of get that heat if you do that I do recommend watching it a little bit especially if you're gonna leave it the whole time that your cakes are in the oven but let's go ahead pop these in and I'll check with you back when we're our cakes are cooling and we're mixing our frosting. Merry meet again. So we have our cakes cooling. I'll let you know right now one of them ended up being a little bit softer and crumbly which of course are the ones that were icing um, on camera today but I wanted to let you know that it is possible to get a nice I'll just show you real quick. This is what our good one looks like. So obviously it came out really nice and then these are the ones that we technically wanted to ice. It's now they're kind of big so I actually might I know we talked about doing layers guys I know but like what if I just ice that other cake I'm really treating like I really kind of flip-flop like the <laughs> the level ones versus the level fours but also why is the strawberry cake a level four I can only assume it's due to the frosting I guess technically <laughs> I cheated a little because they're making a strawberry cake but the thing that you do to add flavor to cake is you just puree the fruit so if you have frozen fruit or if you have fresh fruit you just puree it and you can replace it so typically it takes like one cup to a standard cake batter that's it 
it's that simple. So, um, again, I don't know. I just, we're here. I feel like because of how we're doing the different things, that's why, like, it comes like, oh, what's really easier and what's not. But anyways, I'm holding the knife and that's not what I need right now. Um, what we're going to go ahead and do, as you know, I don't have a sand and mixer as we already saw. And so we're going to go ahead and use these. That's another reason why I really recommend softening your butters and cream cheese when it says to, because then you don't need a an electronic mixer. So we're going to be doing our four ounces of cream cheese, our quarter cup of butter, our salt, which we forgot, so I'm just gonna go grab a pinch real quick. And it truly is a pinch because it, otherwise it's normally like half or an eighth of a teaspoon. So a sixteenth, I was like, I'm just, it'll be fun. <laughs> and then of course, our half teaspoon of vanilla extract. And so these, uh, the butter is really soft. Oh good, the cream cheese, it's not as soft as I, of course, would have preferred, but that's okay, it is just about good. So obviously if you have a mixer, this part's gonna be so much easier. Oh my gosh. The inability to like not make sounds against my surface today is like hurting me hard because every time I hear the bowl against the surface I just get mad which is not a good place to be and I don't know why I must be having a highly sensitive day but for auditory normally it's not auditory because I've been listening to like audiobooks today and stuff watching videos so normally I would have picked up on it sooner anyways but look at that. So that wasn't a cat. And I uh, welcome the ghosts or spirits who are <laughs> tuning in today, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I was just gonna say, uh, you can kind of see, so I know this is, it kind of looks like all over the place. We're gonna be adding the powdered sugar to it to actually make the cream cheese into a frosting, because otherwise right now it's just a lot of fat. <laughs> Not that it's bad or anything, but so it's a little bit incorporated. You just really wanted to get those mixtures kind of blended together. And then since we're adding the cream cheese, it's really not going, to, or cream cheese, the powdered sugar, it's really not going to hurt us that this is kind of like, obviously not staying in one place. So we're gonna be fine because we're gonna keep mixing and mixing. Anyway, so I'm gonna let that be there. Okay, so for this next step, uh, she just, I've already pureed them. So I just used a little blender if you want you can also use a fork and mash them up in a bowl, um, especially if they're like a little bit more overripe, it's even easier to do that. So if you're looking for ways to get rid of your strawberries, pure or any fruit, pureeing it is gonna be one of your better things and then mixing it into your baked goods. So they recommend only doing about two tablespoons to start and using the rest of it to help thin out uh, if, or yeah, to thin out if needed. So let's about two tablespoons. This is bothering me. <laughs> like it's not gonna get mixed otherwise, you know? Anyways, this is why we wash our hands. And as you can see, my blender obviously didn't get all of it. Okay, I'm gonna go wash my hands and then we're gonna add in the powder sugar. Half of it at first and then we'll add it in more gradually. So 
So one of the ways when it's like the liquid comes or the moisture comes from the more solid mixture that you have, that's why you're going to use the back of your spoon, especially whatever you're using to mix. Unless you're using a mixer, then you don't even have to worry about this because it'll naturally do it. Uh, but you'll use that to like, that spreading motion is so important because that's how you're spreading out your liquid so that it can get in touch with the most dry surfaces, thus wetting in them. <laughs> tell me why in my mind right now, I was just like, so can someone tell me if water is wet? <laughs> Which is kind of silly when you think about it. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and add in some more. I'm going to do the rest because honestly we're lucky I held back not doing all of it at once. <laughs> So what's good is, so this is half of her, the original, the recipe is going to be linked below. Um, and it should be more than enough to be able to actually ice everything we have here. I'm kind of, we're not going to do the double layer. We're, we're pivoting just because I like how the other one looks so much. Um, and that's just what we have to do is sometimes just go for what brings us more joy. <laughs> and with that, I'm also going to add the rest of the strawberry puree because I'm not using it for anything else. <laughs> Immediately, my thought was just like, you know, you could use this in a drink. <laughs> Some of you are recovering alcohol. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> just sharing everything on here. Okay. And then just going to grab everything in here so yeah I just wanted to see if it was something where it was just like if it was too runny but I don't think adding what like two more tablespoons is really gonna make or break it I think it's just gonna make it more strawberry and I don't mind it possibly melting into my cakes obviously they're cooling so it's not gonna melt melt but like if it oozes into it one time I made a uh, accidentally a ginger glaze cake oh my gosh it was so good I'd never really had ginger you know we know gingerbread gingerbread is so different never eat gingerbread cookie dough well if you're here you're probably not going to <laughs> but it was so literally the word spicy um and I was like I'd never eat gingerbread again and so it took me messing up a ginger glaze cake to be like oh my gosh I think this is my favorite spice, savory or savory or sweet. <sighs> yeah, ginger. So versatile in so many ways. But anyways, this frosting turned out so good. I'm not going to lie to you. I was a little nervous because as I mentioned, like vegan cream cheese can like stay so hardened. And, but that's why you really put in that dedication of just allowing it to soften ahead of time. Um, and I don't have that mixer. So very excited. <laughs> Let's go ahead. And we're going to ice just our one cake on the camera we'll see you guys soon marry me again so you already saw this beautiful cake i originally just wanted to show you so that you kind of could see um where i go so also how i had overshot so here's like the other ones they did rise and then they like flattened a little bit because they rose too much that's one of the things about textures that's why when you're doing like um, not necessarily you need different sized layers, but why when you're doing layers cakes, that's you don't want to You'd rather bake more individual layers than larger layers because then stability and structure start to become an issue um, So anyways, and that's kind of what you're seeing here I'm also wondering if maybe there was too much oil in some of the corners um, I'm not sure it also could just be the chia because it's a more crumbly egg I don't know, because then this one came out really good, and it's just those other two. They still taste good. Um, but I love how 
this looks. So I'm literally gonna do the same thing we did with the chocolate cake, but this time it's gonna be different because we're not piping anything and we don't need it to go anywhere from the middle. Uh, we're just looking to get this cake covered. That's literally it. So we'll probably just, a couple spoonfuls will probably make us happy. A little worried that almost fell. Oh, it's a giant strawberry chunk. Perfect, it'll stay on top. It's a statement. <laughs> and so, uh, if this is actually notoriously how you would get like a drip is to allow it to go off the sides. This is obviously a thinner cake. So my drip is going to cover almost the sides completely. Ironically, kind of what the icing looks like and then they just pipe on the bottom. But they, on the sends, it like, looks like they use two different icings, which is part of the reason why I decided not to, pr to pipe it. Cause I'm like, if I pipe it and it just isn't gonna end up looking like the thing, then why should I? But maybe this is why it is giving me like childhood stuff. Cause it like, this part. Anyways, literally not using any of my cake decorating tools. Just like la da da, gonna do this part instead. Um, but yeah, I'm honestly not trying to make this look much different. I think this looks fantastic. It's perfectly iced. Let's go get a knife. You know what? I don't need my big fancy knife. We have the butter knife <laughs> that we use to help get our cakes out. Um, and we're just going to use this to get our little center cut, which I guess won't be as pretty because I'm imagining that I somehow magically put frosting in the center of this. But we have our little, <laughs> that's essentially what it'd look like and that you get to eat. I think that'll be a perfect little taste test. I know guys, I know it's not perfect, like to view on camera right now, but it tastes great. <laughs> so if you were going to do just a single layer cake for people and this like little frosting on their Loki strawberry cake, I think it's perfect portions, honestly. You could put the frosting in the fridge for like a few minutes or the freezer to help like thicken it up a little bit and like because this one I honestly put on more to get that but you could have done a really thin coat put it in the freezer come back out and done some more and like really made it into something honestly I think it looks so artisan just how it turned out and that is fate baby no <laughs> I don't have much more to say here Thank you for being here and I hope you guys just had a blast and I'll see you next time. Bye.